What's up, everybody? Welcome to the pre-show. We're going to be here for a few minutes. We like to kick the show off right at 9 o'clock. So we have about three minutes that we're going to be in the pre-show section here. So if you're watching on demand, skip ahead three minutes from this. You don't have to sit here and wait. Um, but if you are new to the show or just hopping in, welcome. Um, on the screen, you're going to actually see how to join the show live. One of the cool things about Pantheon Plus U is that this whole show is dedicated to those who are watching. You're able to join our Discord, jump into a green room as it shows there, and uh, come live on the air. We're actually just bringing you right on the air to talk about what you want to talk about. So it's a lot of fun. It's all about the community. We've uh, been very fortunate to have some support from uh, some of the Pantheon developers in the chat. So light that chat room up. Uh, get in the green room if you want to come on the air. And if you want to join our Discord, like I said, just check out the uh, picture on the right side of the screen here. So we've got about three minutes. We got Theric with us tonight. It's, this isn't your official. This isn't your like official like. Hey, here's Theric. Um, <laughs> this is a pre-show Theric. Yeah, a pre-show Theric is very similar to show Theric. I'll just give you a little spoiler alert on that. <laughs> yep, neither one of them wears pants. So no, no, no. <laughs> That's right. It's just a green screen from the from the waist down. It's the, float <laughs> the floating corpse. <laughs> Uh, what's up, Vandrad and uh, Pashapook? Welcome in. Um, Vandrad, you missed a show last week where there was a lot of praise being hyped on you. It was probably good you moment. weren't here. Probably hey, good you weren't here. Moment of glory. <laughs> oh, so uh, let's see here. So Omega Contagion says uh, pre-show Theric <laughs> is sexy. Well, you know, just wait. It just gets better and better. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till I start drinking more beer and then it gets even better. Yes, yes. That is, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, listen here, if, you, if you're not a drinker, that's absolutely fine. But there's a little bit of drinking that's done on this show from time to time. Um, and uh, we don't judge if you don't drink. But if you do drink, raise your, uh, raise your glass up or your cup or your can, which I don't mm -hmm. recommend can, or uh, your bottle. That's the way to go. And uh, Absolutely. Definitely cheers to everybody. Like I said, about one more minute and then we kick off. So this, this pre-show is going quick. We're going to have some fun tonight. We have some new stuff we're going to do. So get in that green room because uh, the big thing about the green room tonight is you're going to have a really cool chance to do some stuff on this new thing. Teaser. Foreshadowing. Um, and uh, we'll also let the chat be a part of it too. So uh, like I said, jump in that green room when the show starts and let us know you want to be in there. Mm. Sacred has Sacred has to make a beer run, so we have to we have to delay the show. Sacred, Sacred has two can. minutes. That beer run better be to a really <laughs> close refrigerator. What's up, uh, Nemufe? We got Omega. I said hi to you, Cerulean. Welcome, Sacred. Always welcome. Galu Galu, you were here early. Welcome in. Oh, we got a pre-show follow. Uh, DPD Gamer, thank you for following. You didn't get your name up there, but it'll be up on the chat when we actually start. So it's nine o'clock. I'm seeing nine o'clock. You ready to go? Ready to go, man. All right, guys. Here we go. Oh, we're, we're live. We're, we're streaming right now. Cool. Awesome, man. Let me just. Uh... <laughs> What is going on, everybody? Minus here from Pantheon Plus. It's kind of funny. That has become like my opening line. I was talking to somebody recently and they're like, I don't know how to start. And I said, I don't know. The first time I did something, I said, hi, everybody. Minus here from Pantheon Plus. And I literally say it every single time. <laughs> I was going to get a shirt that just said, hi, everyone. Minus here from Pantheon Plus. <laughs> just made for <laughs> myself. So what is going on, guys? It is my favorite time of the week, Thursdays at nine o'clock when we go and we start talking some Pantheon. So uh, pretty excited uh, tonight for a topic that's going to be uh, pretty highly debated. I think we're going to have a good topic to talk about. Um, so first, let me introduce my guest, um, our first ever uh, recruit to the Pantheon Plus team. He is known as the guinea pig amongst us yeah. <laughs> he, he's doing a phenomenal job and i love if you guys haven't caught his lore videos yet please check them out they are amazing perspectives 
Um, so, uh, Theric, welcome to Pantheon Plus U, your first time. Right on. Yeah. No, thank you, man. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I, yeah, I remember the first time I called in and uh, been wanting to come on ever since. So, yeah, no, super excited. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, no problem. And uh, you're my co-host tonight. So as I always say, feel free to jump in, correct me uh, when I mispronounce names, uh, jump in and question and uh, all that. So a um, couple housekeeping things. Um, if you don't know or haven't come on for um, our normal weekly streams, we are streaming quite a bit now. We're streaming Monday through Wednesday with gameplay. Um, and uh, on top of that, we are uh, we're pretty locked into a game called Wilson. <laughs> It's kind of funny. We were just going to try some games until we found something that stuck or if people um, <laughs> did you see what Cerulean just said? He said, if people correct you, and this is what happens when I get sidetracked. If people correct you <laughs> when you mispronounce names, we'll be here all night. <laughs> it would definitely extend the show. That's like free. Like uh, it's like when a dev streams up, we have like a free, easy night of topic to talk about. We could do a whole show of mine. is just mispronouncing names. We'd fill it. We'd fill two hours. We would never get out of here. Um, oh, we just need idiot, idiot, idiot EQ to show up and then we'll have a <laughs> whole show just about that name all in itself. Yeah, I don't know if uh, I don't know if I will ever get a better one than that. No. Just because he he just he was such a trooper. He, he just, just rolled stuck, with it the whole just time. just rolled with it. So, yeah, guys, what I was saying is um, we're playing a game called Wilson. Um, it is a Diablo-style uh, ARPG, and we are having a blast. Actually, the game has been so much fun, and we're super excited about it. Uh, we are actually uh, making that pretty much a mainstay. We've uh, edited up our Discord to create a section for it, and we have probably 30 to 40 people already signed up. Uh, who are going to be playing that game within the community. So a great place to come and join the community, be a little Pantheon patient. I think when you can have something to look forward to with a group of friends and play a good game and chat with the same community you're going to hopefully play Pantheon with, uh, it helps you get through some of the law when you're when you're really wanting to play Pantheon and when you're, when you're getting frustrated. We hope that it'll uh, help you through your times there. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're streaming. Uh, most of the time you're going to see Walson. Um, so come hang out with us. Check it out if you haven't. Now, let's get to real stuff here. Let's get to Pantheon. I love playing and talking about this game and hyping it up and getting excited. I love playing the games during the week, but this is the show. This is what I really enjoy. So those of you who maybe joined us because of Wilson, welcome to the show. This should, this should be a lot of fun tonight. So what we do is we talk about different topics within the uh, MMO uh, RPG realm, and we relate it into Pantheon and the things we know. And tonight we're going to be talking about raiding. Now, you guys notice there's no uh, meter down at the bottom there. Uh, usually we have a thermometer. You kind of rate, you know, high, low, mid, and we have topics and you kind of discuss it. But for rating, it's a little difficult to make a meter. And I've been thinking to myself, how do we how do we get people to be a part of the stream like they do with the meter, moving the meter up and down um, and do it for topics where it's not that simple? Ah, well, tonight, my nerdiness will hit a new level because we have a new segment, and here's how we're going to talk about rating. So without further ado, minus his nerdy contraption here, even with sound effects, might I add, I present to you the Pantheon Plus whiteboard. We got the sound effects going there. Okay, so what is the whiteboard? Well, the whiteboard's pretty interesting. Here's the concept that we're going to do here. We're going to have topics on the whiteboard, okay? And when you come on the show, you're going to be able to add to the whiteboard, okay? So we're going to, here's the topics. Let's go in. We'll, we'll show the topics first here real quick. We're going to talk about raid size tonight. We're going to talk about the best part of raiding. And we're going to talk about the best solution for competition. So here's how I can't write on the whiteboard. It's broken. No, it has a protective force field. Because if I just let you guys just write on this board, <laughs> Twitch is we're getting banned on Twitch. I know I know you guys well enough. So the way it's going to work is instead of breaking into my rant and rave, we're going to go through with Theric here um, these different topics and we're going to write a number, a word, a short little couple words, and we're going to put them on the board and we're going to put them all over the board for the different categories. And what's going to happen is when we bring people on from the green room and we'll also let the chat also be a part of it, you'll be able to either add your own words or you can vote up words that are already there or numbers or whatever. And as you vote up the different words or uh, numbers, I'm going to make them bigger. So at the end of this, the bigger 
words that we see, the bigger numbers we see, that's going to be more representative of, of what people are looking for. Um, so it should be a lot of fun to talk through. So anyone who jumps in the green room will talk specifically about these three categories, which again is what's your what's your preferred raid size? What is the best part about raiding? What makes you want to raid? And what's the solution for competition? Because right now, competition is a big discussion point within the Pantheon community. And then from there, tell us some good raid stories. That's what we're going to try to do tonight. Share some stories about raiding, why we like it, and get this uh, whiteboard all set up. So, Theric, I'm ready to go. Are you? Yeah. Let's do right, so, it, man. So cheers to everybody. I'm back to the Mick Ultra. I got to tell you, I'm mm -hmm. becoming a huge fan of the Mick Ultra. Everybody used to make fun of me for it, but I think I'm going to stand up for it now. I'm drinking good Canadian beer. Big rock. Good, good Canadian beer. Out of Alberta. Beer. I didn't yeah. know that existed. Good Canadian, strong Canadian beer. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. All right. So, Derek, let's... Uh, yeah, see? Booch said McUltra is good. There we go. I got one supporter. Me and Booch are alone. <laughs> okay, so let's start when we talk about rating here. Let's talk about raid size. Now, let's keep in mind that uh, Pantheon is a six-man group. So, with that in mind, they've also sort of announced that there will be 12... Um, what is it? 12, 24 and 40 man raids, I think is what they've said. So if you want to stick with their numbers, that's absolutely fine. Or you could just say what you think would be the best. So I'm going to start and say that I feel like personally that the best, um, raid size for me is probably going to be, um, I'm going to say 24, man. I'm going to be uh, a big fan of, so I'm going to throw a 24 up here. So 24, um, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to shrink it up. It's a little too big to start. We have to get people to vote on that first. So get a little smaller on the 24. That's going to be my answer for that. And I like 24 because I think it just fits. Um, it sort of just fits with the four man, four groups of six. It's clean. Um, it's not too many. So you should be able to fill that pretty well. I think one of my biggest fears for raid size, especially coming from WoW, is that the raids actually adjusted to raid uh, anywhere from 10 to 30, you could you could have as many as you want and the raid would just casually adjust. And it made it really easy to run a guild and it made it so whoever showed up nine times out of 10, you were able to go and nobody had to sit. And that was pretty interesting to me. So I don't want it too big because I sort of fear that if it is too large of a raid group that you may not be able to get enough and then you might not be able to raid and you're waiting on people, you have to do pickups. So it kind of creates a difficult situation for me if it's too big. If it's too small, then people are sitting. So I'm kind of going in that middle. So Theric, what's your thoughts on raid size? Well, I, you know, I think I would go quite a bit larger than the 24 to me. Like for me, my perspective comes from EverQuest, like just playing vanilla EverQuest back in the day. I didn't play WoW. Um, so all my pers my raiding experience was from doing EverQuest raids, which were, you know, basically like free for all, right? Like as mm -hmm. many people showed up as many people showed up um, and you needed that many people to successfully raid. Um, you know, I don't know if that's realistic to just say a raid is as big as it needs to be, you know, based on the content. Yeah. But I think that maybe the definition of raid has gotten a little a little um, muddied over the years in terms of, so like I could, like a four groups of six, that I would still say that's a raid. Any smaller than that, I wouldn't even classify it as a raid. In fact, I would say a raid maybe is 40 plus, maybe even more. Um, so I would go, I would go, I mean, if we're doing it in multiples of six, you don't um, have to, because they've said 40 is going to be one of their raid sizes, which means we can put the two Rangers in the group in the, the last group by themselves. <laughs> yeah. Well, we will, we will be the sacrificial lambs so that you can succeed. I'm sorry, we'll four, pull. it'd be four Rangers by themselves, right? Cause it'd be, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, me and Omega, at least, you know, we'll, 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 <laughs> we'll keep you guys safe. We'll do it. <laughs> You won't have a cleric though, so you guys have to really be careful. There won't be any other <laughs> so, yeah. what do you what do so, you, what number do you want to throw up there then? Do you want to? Well, I I I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I don't know. I'm gonna say 40, 48. Ooh, 48. Okay. Yeah, I, I want to go. I want to go big. I mean, you know, part of my idea of a raid is it should feel huge. It should feel epic, right? Uh, um, I think there's a difference between a raid and a multi-group. A dungeon situation so okay 48 is yeah. pretty big that's uh and that's bigger than uh any wow players ever went to because uh it at 40 that was i think the max you did at wow at any one point they, they got away from it but 40 was the max so okay so raid size we have a couple numbers up there um guys jump in the green room you can come on and uh, vote for those answers put your own answers up um and and we'll, we'll play with it so what we're going to do once we roll this out there is we're going to give people the ability to vote and answer up 
vote an answer down, add their own, and they can do that with each of the categories when they come on. So they can actually just shrink one if they just really dislike it. So it should be pretty fun to see what we do there. Um, okay, so let's talk about the second part. This is a little more in depth. So as you guys are in the green room, start thinking about the conversation here. Uh, the best part of rating, I started with raid size. I'm gonna throw it to you to start um, with the best part of rating. The best part of rating, I mean, I think it's I think it's being a part of something that's way way bigger than yourself. I mean, to me, rating is the is the highest it should be the highest and hardest content in the game i mean i think that what people strive for is the ultimate like not everybody but a lot of people strive for that ultimate challenge and that's what raiding represents so you know when when, when i raid um i want to feel like we're accomplishing something that takes Ooh, good uh, word. a different a different level of uh effort or even dif just a different level of coordination or organization okay. um yeah so i mean it's gotta it's gotta feel big it's gotta feel epic so you would if you had to put one or two words to what you just said you, you put out a couple big words like an epic feeling you put out um what'd you say uh achievement yeah um, like an accomplishment accomplishment um, yep what do you think uh, i think those are i think those are the sort of the key takeaways from from my what i'm looking for from a raid i think yeah so that, that would go up there all right well you want to put both of those up we can give you two you're a co-host <laughs> we're gonna we'll cheat for you we'll cheat for yeah. you okay yeah, so I'm you gonna, have i'm gonna abuse my co-host privileges and take two so accomplishment and um let's shrink that down because it's huge i love how they don't care at all that i've adjusted the font and i'm trying to make it smaller <laughs> you know what? let me do it in a way that like is more friendly to uh to uh, Photoshop, which is what we're using here. I'm gonna actually change the number instead of shrinking it. So you you have accomplishment. Let's see if that fixed it. That might have done it. It did. And you did um, epic. And epic was the other one, yeah. Epic, what would we say? Epic uh, mm. environment. Sure. Does that work? Yeah. You didn't say that, but I'm gonna just put epic environment. Okay, so we have accomplishment, epic environment. Welp, my turn. And uh, you said a word that sums up what I wanted to say. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually up accomplishment. We're going to put it up five to uh, 50. So accomplishment is for me the ultimate without a doubt. The windows bleep. Did you guys like that? We might get some windows beep. Uh, this this freaking Photoshop yells at you for everything you do wrong. It's like, nope, you can't do that yet. OK, so achievement is big for me. Um, and here's why uh, achievement, accomplishment, uh, we'll put accomplishment. I love, uh, and not many people, um, not many people look at it this way when it's frustrating. Um, the most memorable moments in raiding for me is when I was running a raid as a guild in WoW, specifically Legion, we had a lot of fun with. It was probably our most successful time. And um, there were fights that we got to that just slapped us in the face, man. It, you can almost say difficulty is a part of this as well. Um, it just slapped you in the face. It was really hard. Um, it would cause people to leave the guild and fight. And as a leader, you're like trying to keep the peace and, you know, do your role instead of yelling at him. If you're not looking at him, you're not doing your job. <laughs> it's like all this crazy stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but when you get that boss down, the one you've been stuck on for, you know, we, we were a casual rating group, but we always were ahead of the curve. So we did, we were casual yet. We were, we were well-received on our server and we didn't do the mythic stuff so much. So for me, it was interesting because because um, when we would get stuck on a major fight like that, um, when we got it down, we would literally like stand up and scream. Like I remember getting Fallen Avatar down for the first time and I literally threw my headset off and was just like, <laughs> yes, you know, like and, and, and you heard exactly. it across the headset, right? Everyone was screaming that all the suffering and all the frustration when you mm -hmm. finally get one of those fights down is incredible. The sense of accomplishment, the memories you have with the people you achieve it with is huge for me. So accomplishment is uh, is going to be uh, raised up a little bit. We're going to do accomplishment as our uh, as my word. I agree with you 100 percent there. Um, mm -hmm. So let, let's get into the last topic. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, Fowl for uh, giving us a follow. So I appreciate that. Um, OK, so the best solution for uh, competition. This is a uh, a little bit of a tricky one. Um, it's also tough to probably put into um, to put exactly into words, so to speak. But um, let's say what 
you can use a few words for this one. You can make like a little phrase. What's your solution for the competition? Because in Pantheon, there are people who are very afraid of um, guilds mm -hmm. PV. It's called I call it PVE PVP. Right. You have yeah. two guilds running in at a boss that someone steals it or you train a group to kill them and you take over. Um, and I think one of the fears is that this isn't like it was back in the day. Back in the EQ days, there weren't a ton of people who were raiding. There was very select mm -hmm. uh, guilds. I think that as MMOs have evolved, as people have learned how to play them, one of the things that we're not going to get back that we had in EQ is how difficult the game was. Right. Um, EQ was hard because we've never played anything like it at the time you got lost and you literally got scared <laughs> like, yeah no that's and that's totally true i mean it's a different world today right like it's a different environment people yeah. are different people have learned you know as gamers we've all learned you know how to navigate the mmo um yep. space a little bit differently right and, and even just the, the social culture of the world has changed yeah. a lot you know there were yeah. there were policies in everquest called play nice policies i don't know how well yeah. those would work today <laughs> well just, see that yeah. And you know, that's funny because I, I, in my optimist brain, I want that to still be true. Right. Yeah. Yep. Like I, um, part of me says that when it comes to competition, because we were given, and I've made this point before on another show that, um, we were given tools, technical tools to deal with problems that were communication based mm -hmm. or person based or you know social issues like just how we talk to each other and how we deal with each other changed because we had we got shortcuts right we didn't have to deal with each other so much yeah um thank you so to I, uh delord and tashin for the follows there thank you guys and tashin thank you for the subscription holy cow i uh, really appreciate that man yeah, it's, it's interesting because there's a lot of things that you would think have made it easier for us to be strong with communication. And oh, thank you, Delord. You guys are incredible. And Stupid Cleric, thank you. I, I love your name, Stupid Cleric. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, when you call someone their actual name, you're like, oh, what, what did I say? <laughs> thank you guys so much. So, um, so okay, um, let's, let's get some words out here. What's the best solution for it? So, ah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and toss the first word out that I think the best solution for competition is um, raid locking. Uh, that That's the phrase I'm going to use. And I'll explain that a little bit is that it's not so much that bosses are on these infinitely long camp timers, right? Um, I think that your raid gets locked from being able to engage. And I think that also ties into the fact that if you're going to raid lock, you're going to do it in a way that um, when you get the boss attack first, which kind of what they said, that you're going to be the group that's locked into it. So I think that raid locking is very important and should take away the competition. So um, Fortune Black, thank you so much for the subscription. I, I really, really do appreciate that. You guys are absolutely incredible. Thank you for your support. Um, Theric, what, what's what's a phrase you would use? Well, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if I have a, a phrase for it. I, I kind of wonder... You know, competition for raid targets and raid bosses. I don't know how. I don't know if it's a problem we really need to um, that needs to be uh, focused on a lot. I think that we can deal with, you know, some tools that might not be so heavy handed like a raid lock. And I, I would maybe something along the lines of just. Um, like if Pantheon has a problem with people stealing targets where people sort of acting in, you know, being bad characters, mm. the game's doing pretty well. Like if there's enough people <laughs> around yeah. to do that. that that's really a good point. That's really a good point. Thing, you know, like the, the game seems to be doing pretty well, if that's the case. And I know that people will kind of, you know, probably roll their eyes and, and say that that's, you know, naive. But, um, you know, I, again, I go back to give us, VR give us some social tools to help us, you know, manage these situations without necessarily locking a raid to one group, one raid group. I don't know. Something so heavy like so that. You, so so uh, here's how I would phrase what you're saying. You tell me if I'm wrong. This is my my guessing of how you feel. Are you saying that you would sort of prefer community control? Like it's the community yeah. that controls yes. this from happening? Like community Absolutely. reputation, things like that? Yes. Community polices totally. itself. Yes. Yeah. So 
you know, community tools. Yeah. Okay. I think that's sort of what EverQuest did, right? EverQuest, the community sort of police. I just, again, I am also typically a very optimistic person. Um, I'm a little less optimistic on this category. So I'm, I'm curious. I would love that to be the case, but I'm a little afraid that it will be. So yeah, understandable. Okay, so we got the green room rocking. Are you ready to start taking some guests? They're going to upvote, downvote our responses, add some words in, and uh, we'll fit everything on here. It can, get, it can become chaos, but we will, we will fit everything on here. So, um, okay, um, so the chat's been lighting up. Um, Serlin says, one thing I want to consider is Mac server sizes are likely to be much larger than they were in EQ. Very possible there. So there's the uh, probability that there's going to be more top-end kills on a server. Yeah. Um, Vandred said, reputation's irrelevant if your guild is wholly self-sufficient. It's actually a really good point. And uh, Nemufei said that he agrees with you 100% on that. So if he gets in the chat, he's going to be able to help you. We'll, we'll let the chat do it too. <laughs> so um, so Drac has been uh, waiting. He was one of the first ones on. So Drac Attack, we are going to get you on first tonight on Pantheon Plus U. So Drac, I'm bringing you in now. Get ready to come on the air. What's going on, Drac? How are you? I'm doing great. So hey, welcome. Man. Thank you for hanging out. You were here a little early, so I wanted to make sure you were our first one in. So what's up, man? How are you? Uh, I'm doing excellent. I actually, uh, usually Thursday night I'm busy, but I actually got a free night. So I'm, I'm here live instead of watching the replay on YouTube. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, man. And thank you for, uh, giving us some of your free time there. I greatly appreciate that. Um, so first of all, whiteboard, not bad, right? A little nerdy, but, but a way to sort of, it's, it's, it's Dude, I love a good whiteboard. I love it. So. <laughs> hold on, hold on. We do have the sound effects. I haven't been, there they are. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Drac, we're going to go down the list with you. And if you want to share any raid stories, I really do think that uh, this would be a great time to do that too, but we'll get to that. So let's start with the first topic there. We have two numbers up on the board. We have 24 and 48 for raid size. We're aware what VR is planning to do, which is 12, 24, and 40. Um, so what are your thoughts on raid size? Um, talk a little bit about what you've experienced in other games that you've played, and then let's get you either upgrading, downgrading, or putting a new number on the board. Uh, so I'm an old school EQ guy. I was there from almost the beginning on EQ. And then I also did a lot of WoW. Okay. Um, so I guess I got kind of the both both sets of, of rating styles. Um, I really, uh, I think WoW, I know it's kind of sacrilege to say, but I think WoW kind of did rating a little bit better. My two uh, favorite raids were the the Zulamon raid. The, the, oh, the great one. With the bear. And also, of yeah. course... Karazhan. Those are my two absolute two ten mans, ever. two of my favorites too. And don't worry, on Pantheon Plus you were allowed to like wow. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, don't do um, it on Reddit. Whatever you do. Oh my gosh, I couldn't imagine. Just keep it here. But yeah, on Pantheon Plus you, wow is okay. So um yeah, I mean, I, I did a lot of the, uh, you know, the EQ raids and we had, you know, 75, 80 people. And I, I think sometimes maybe we forget that, you know, there was a lot of people standing around. There was a lot of people not doing stuff. There was a lot of people falling asleep. There was a lot of people just, you know, basically <laughs> doing nothing. Yeah, you <laughs> fell asleep because you were waiting for 15 hours to get a kill or you were the guy who had to stay up all night using the bat phone to get everybody <laughs> But that is true. I remember a lot of times, like, mm -hmm. in, I only did, like, the plane of fear and the plane of hate mainly. And I do remember yep. sitting there, like. No, oh, totally. I sat there for eight hours. And I know like, you can't do that anymore. Like, it's just not realistic. But, yeah, yeah no. <laughs> Back in the day, right? So, Drac, you said you like how WoW does it. Um, so, what does that mean? What What's that? What size do you like? Do you like the, I mean, you could put up there the scaling. The scaling is what they do now. But they did 10 mans and they did. I mean, it started, what, 10 and 40? That was it. I I think I'm going to go a little bit higher than 10. I just think that uh, you should have a little bit rate, a, a size a little bit bigger. I like 18. That's three groups. I think that's okay. kind of a nice size. So we're throwing up a number, a new number. Let's get 18 on the board here. Let's get the sound effects. Oh, yeah. It works while I'm in Photoshop. It's like I'm a professional at what I do. Don't hold me to that because I'm not at all. All right, so we have 18 on the board. And we got the sound effect off now. There we go. <laughs> so 18, that's actually pretty cool. That'd be three groups, um, which, you know, yeah, you brought up Karazhan and you brought up ZA. Nobody brings up ZA. What a raid. And it was timed. If, if you did it quick enough, you got a bear mount. And man, I remember being seconds away from getting that mount and just being like, no. Some, like one person died on the last fight. And you're like, no. 
our DPS. So yeah, I, in Karazhan, I mean, the big thing with Karazhan that was really cool, Drac, was there were a lot of small guilds that didn't get to do 40 man content unless they like grouped up with other guilds or formed alliances. And when that hit and you had a small guild say, oh my gosh, we can do this. That was, it was an amazing feeling. It was absolutely incredible absolutely. feeling. Yeah, that 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 one was so much fun, and like you said, I did the same thing on the on the Zulamon raid. You know, we failed like with seconds left, and then w we did it the next time, and we were like, we won it with like three seconds left, right? And that was such yeah. an amazing like experience. We're all yelling and screaming. It was great. <laughs> yeah, that's the end. Of, that's what it is. So let's go in. So you kind of brought up the yelling and screaming. Let's get right into the best part of raiding. Why do you raid? What is your favorite part about raiding? Um, do you, do you agree with anything on the board or are we putting another new one up? I'm waiting for someone to say loot. <laughs> oh, I'm going to throw a new word up. I like the camaraderie of it. I like the building of the friendships yes. and like the team building. Okay. And if, if you, if you do the same, if you do the same rating group with people week after week after week, uh, you really start to become friends and, and even, uh, long-term relationships form out of that. Perfect. I yeah. love it. It's such an intense, experience like it's such a high level of organization and coordination that's required that's i think that you're totally right drac i think that's that makes like team building yeah that's a perfect way of putting it um, it, it totally is a team building exercise yeah yeah awesome um so the last part here what's the best solution for competition you come from wow there was instance rating there um what are your thoughts on the open world issues that we may come across? Do we just deal with it? Um, are, are we keying? I mean, like, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, I'm a, I, I kind of like the, the developer's idea of the raid lock, uh, but I'll also throw out there that uh, I think it's on the developers to create uh, large amounts of raid content. And so th there's lots of raids that we can all get into. And, and so there's uh, lots of targets. Cool. So you want, so, okay, so you kind of said raid lock. Not that I'm trying to hype my pick here. You got to watch, watch me, Theric. You got to watch me. Okay. Um, and then I you kind of brought up, you know, the best solution for competition is just content. That's actually a really good one. So do you want to throw the word content up there then? Absolutely. Yep. Track's like, listen, I like you guys, but I don't like your ideas. I'm going to put three new ones up there. No, I think you added some great <laughs> stuff, Track. Track, anything before we uh, before we let you go, anything you want to add to it or anything about rating that you're concerned about or a question you have or what are your thoughts? Um, I just want to add that um, I hope they re the developers really take care, um, specifically for tanks and the Mez class, that there's not like the secondary tanks and the secondary enchanters and stuff like that, that there's nothing for them to do. Um, because I remember, um, especially in EverQuest, you would raid and there was only one tank that ever did anything. And then there was <laughs> all, I mean, enchanters barely did anything after Kunark. So they were, they were buff bots. It's a good point. Yep. Yeah. The, the individuality of the classes, uh, I think we're going to be safe and I feel really comfortable about that with the way the game's being designed. So, Awesome. Well, Drac, thank you, buddy. I thank you for some really good stuff there. I think we uh, may see some vote ups coming soon from that. So Drac, thanks for uh, jumping in, man. Thanks for being here early. And thanks for giving us a free night. You said you don't have many free Thursdays and you gave it to us. So I appreciate that. Thanks for having me. Take it easy. Thanks, Drac. See you, man. So Theric, you brought up some good points. The totally friendships good. in team totally voting good. is it's, even I want to sort of vote that even though I have the sense of accomplishment up there. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I do really like that. And content's interesting. Content scares me. The, the thing with you know content what? is it's, it's a great, it is a solution, but you have a small team. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I agree with that. I, you know, building a raid, building raid content, oof, you know, it's a tall order, right? Um, especially if they're going to do it for different, you know, group sizes tailored for different group sizes. That's, that's, um, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, if you think about when EverQuest came out, I mean, I don't think there was any raid content at the start, and then there was, you know, hate and fear, and then they like that was really the only true raid content. There was big stuff, but there wasn't anything on that scale. So. You know what I do want from those raids that we haven't had? I huh. and and chat, tell me if you agree with this because I think this might not be popular. I like one of my biggest memories of those raids was the break in. Yeah. Breaking yeah, into oh, the raid. 
that's it sort of encapsulates everything about rating that break in right yeah <clears throat> because yeah. it was so specific what you had to do right and if everybody if one person went off that path and you know picked up a gorilla <laughs> or something there you know you're screwed you're totally dead yeah. um that's what i'm talking about and it it was very um you had to you had to know what you were doing and you failed and that's fine that's great actually you know yeah. uh, getting getting beaten down and, sort and of thrown shouldn't, out shouldn't it be a break in like if an army of heroes is coming to your doorstep shouldn't you try to put them down right then and there like yeah. you know having that force right at the gate and, and and we've evolved a little bit right so back then if you had a fast internet it wasn't so bad if your internet was really slow you just logged in dead that's that problem yeah. gone <laughs> That happened to me so many times. <laughs> I just, yeah. All right, so we're yeah, gonna no, go. Van Red. Wait, oh, were you actually mentioned. perfect lead in? What'd you say? I was just gonna say Van Red mentioned uh, Nagy and Vox. They were in the game at launch too, and he's yep. right. Yep, yep. They were big targets. Yep. Okay, uh, and that's another thing for raiding. Um, WoW did something, and if, for those that didn't play, there were raid fights where you just walked in, and there was a giant boss, or maybe two, a mid boss, and then a giant boss, and that was it. Like um, you had uh, Mag Theridan, you just went in, cleared to him, and it was a huge epic 40-man fight, and that was it. And then there was um, Grohl in the cave. You would build through the cave. There were a couple, uh, there were two like mini bosses you had to fight before you got to him, and then it was just a big epic fight. I wouldn't even mind seeing that as well, so uh, we'll see. All right, so um, we're going to bring Vandrad in uh, next. He was in there waiting, so let's bring Vandrad in and see what he has to say. What's up, Vandrad? How are you? Raiding, raiding, raiding. <laughs> Vandrad, oh, you missed. You missed the show I know, where you could I'm have sorry. sat with your chest. Don't be sorry. You you could have sat with your chest out and just smiling, like, look at me, look at My me, boobs. guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, congratulations! Uh, you got a shout out on the dev stream. I don't know if you got to see that. I did. I got. And I got to see it after the fact. And that was really cool to hear from Chris. And then, you know, I, I thanked you because that was kind of some love for the show as well. I know you had and I gave you credit. You've been saying it for a long time. It wasn't just on Pantheon Plus U, but I like to think that perhaps the venue of Pantheon Plus U um, helped you out. So it's a great platform for getting <laughs> ideas out to a lot of people. And be, you were really upset that night. There's a lot of people who've messaged me and said, does that mean I just have to come on your show and be really upset? No, it does not. <laughs> there are other paths to get noticed. <laughs> you have to be upset and correct. Okay, yeah. all right, there you go. There you go. That's a, That's a tough one. That last one there is tough. Um, so, Vandred, we're talking raiding. I know you're a raid fan. You're, you got oh, your guild ready to go. You're fan. ready to raid. Um, let's go down the list here. And if you want to share any stories about raiding or why you love raiding oh, at any point, yeah, please do. Totally. Okay. Let's start right, with so raid size. Yeah, let's let's uh, take forty eight and let's up that, and I'll, oh, I'll give you okay. some reasons why. Nice. Let's look at the at it, and this is strictly mathematical. Okay, we have <laughs> six person groups, we have twelve classes and four archetypes. So we're looking at what's a good common denominator that lets you have a good mm. representation of everything. This is a math and, equation. Guys, hold on. Let me hold on. <laughs> Can I put the sound effect on while you're doing math here? Hold on. Yeah, sure. Um, so if if you look at 48 and you've got four archetypes, you're talking 12 representatives from each archetype. So that gives you a good blend of, you know, do I need more clerics or more shaman or more druids? And it doesn't ever mean that you have to leave somebody out because there's always enough slots for those archetypes. If you start going too small and you've got one of those classes that is maybe marginally useful in a raid, they can easily be left out. 48 gives you the opportunity to leave. Everybody's going to have a space. <laughs> GJS35 just said, I didn't know there'd be math. <laughs> <laughs> but he here's the funny part. I love math. My name is Minus, oh right? Oh, My man. guild. We're, and not, we're not friends anymore, man. I, well, well, I mean, we're called anymore. Pantheon Plus. My yeah. name is Minus. My characters' names are like addition, multiply, divide. That's what all my characters are based on. The only problem is, and we're going to do a whole show where people try to help me find a last name. Because <laughs> if you have to have a last name in Pantheon, what goes after minus? Like minus divide? I don't, I don't know. Um, anyway, square actually, root. with what you square brought root. <laughs> minus square root. Um, Vandred, you actually brought up a really good point when you brought up. Um, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you see what I said? 
<laughs> Hoye said, Minus might as well also make a two named virgin. I have a three year old. Okay. <laughs> I think she's mine. Her head's huge. My head's huge. Um, okay. Um, so, Vander, you brought up a really good point with, like, the classes. Um, the one biggest thing I will tell you that it, why it has to be multiples of six, right? It's got to be multiples of six. Otherwise, you've, you've, when they said 40, it, it kind of blew my mind because what do you do with this last group of four? Why mm -hmm. four? Why could you not just add the two more people and make the full group? That just makes no sense to me whatsoever. So and you don't agree that maybe it's just to put rangers in, so you don't have to worry about. <laughs> Saw that coming a mile away. <laughs> you can still have six rangers in the group. I mean, yes, they're using their bind point playing gems, but <laughs> you know, at least you've got room for all of them there. Did you just say done. that you? So you're in your guild. Are you going to be the raid leader, or are you going to have someone else yes. raid? Yeah, okay. I'm the raid leader. You're going to allow six rangers to come to your raid. Your raid. Yeah, sure. Why not, <laughs> guys? There you and go. I'll Rangers explain join why his guild. once we get to the best part of raiding. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, awesome. Um, okay, so I upped the 48. 48's leading the way right now. We got the double vote there. Um, so let's get to the best part of raiding. So what is the best part of raiding for you? Controlled chaos. Ah, okay. You know, it's, right, it's the... let me get that. Hold on, you let know, me get when that you, up. When you, did the, when you did the first Nagafin raid, you know, it was the... The panic of standing outside the door, not wanting to get, you know, within close enough range of heat aggro. You've got, you know, the sweat's going down. You're getting all nervous. And then it's that call to run in and go. Uh, you know, same thing with Vox, having to run past her to get to the safe hall. And it, it, and it, playing a fear was a good one, too, because the pathing was so you know, so complicated and convoluted and any little mistake could cause such a problem. Everybody has to be on their toe. Everybody has to be thinking. Everybody has to be paying attention. And you've got one person that's trying to keep all of that under control. Yeah. That's there is a, a lot of fun. I keep, I've referenced this a couple of times. And if anyone in the um, raid chat or um, raid chat, <laughs> Anyone in the, <laughs> I love raiding. I do. I really do. I could go on forever about it. Um, if anyone in Twitch chat knows this, help me out and uh, link it if, you, if you've heard of this. And I don't know if anyone has. There is a book out there, and it might be a short book, but it's about somebody who was a raid leader. And they talked about how they went on a really high-profile job interview, and they actually talked about what it was like to be a raid leader when it came to coordinating a team. And blew, yeah, I remember hearing that. Right. And blew away this executive because you're essentially think about what rating is at its core. You have people from all over the world. Different time zones, different beliefs, different raising. And you have to find a way to find common ground with 20, 30, 40, 50 people, organize them getting on at the right time. I mean, even just planning a raid time is difficult making sure people show up, making sure people during the week are doing their homework, are getting their gear, are being part of the guild, making sure people aren't causing... I mean, the amount of coordination that goes into, as you said, controlled chaos when you're raiding is incredible. And I think that that also ties into when you do accomplish something or you make friends, it's even just more remarkable because of the chaos, right? Yeah, and and you know, you also had to make the entire event fun. Yeah. You know, you mm -hmm. have to keep... You it's have not to always be, fun, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you're the you're the ringleader of, you know, of the circus and, you know, you're trying to keep everybody entertained, keep them active, keep them going, keep them interested. You know, mm -hmm. if you've got some downtime, you know, you're, you're trying to come up with things just to keep people excited. And yeah. the more you can get people involved in that entire process, the better. And I, I always you're sort of like to, a, you're sort of like a therapist. Yeah, uh, exactly, outside you know? of raid times, you're you're. You're a problem solver. You're a therapist. You know, someone has a problem, you know, uh, minus, you know, this therapist guy know. is really mean to me. He's making me put yeah. elf ears on. <laughs> You know, you there were me. lots of raids where, you know, you'd have like the main tank was the only guy that was, you know, really having to concentrate a lot. You know, of course, the clerics did. But, you know, mm -hmm. the main tank was the focus of everything. And a lot of people could just sit by and go, eh, whatever. I'm not very into I click a couple buttons and that's it. We used to raid Vexthal. And, you know, if you've ever been there, you know, it had these long hallways lined with NPCs and these little <laughs> rooms that had any 10 or 12 mobs in there. And trying to pull one after one after one was such a pain. It was boring. It was long. 
We got tired of that. And we said, okay, fine. We've got plenty of tanks. You send the rogue in. He picks a target and assigns it to an off tank. And then somebody, typically a ranger, would go in and, and hit the first one and pull the entire room <laughs> at one time. Yeah, I think and, that was you leading that raid. I think I was on that raid. <laughs> you know, and, and it was just like, okay, guys, you know what your job is. You know, just concentrate on what you're doing and we'll get through it. And... Well, you know, we'd clear entire rooms at a time. And the minute one mob was dead, yeah, everybody would switch and go to the next one. And pretty soon we're just killing it. And we could get from entrance to Ottenha Rot in just about two hours. And when it you had that type of coordination and, and, you know, people knew, like, look how smooth these guys run. Like, it's... And it's, people <sighs> were excited about that because yeah, it was nonstop. And, I mean, just the chaos of having 72 people in this tiny room and 20 mobs running around and you know a couple people dying and you're getting them res and rebuffed and they're going back into the fight god that's so much fun i yeah, don't know if you, you know, saw van dread but a little bit ago um and it was a little up in the chat but somebody said um let's see here uh that your guild is going to be last to killing everything if you're taking that many rangers so <laughs> <laughs> last to clear <laughs> Uh, and we'll, then we we'll also just, we'll drag the corpses along. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, that's, you have well, one I'll dedicated get, corpse. That's fine. Look at the loot. Watch <laughs> rangers. The... Watch rangers be like the most badass class in Pantheon, and everyone's like, hundred percent. Didn't see 100%. that coming. Didn't see that. It's totally coming. happening. The VR listens to this chat. They're gonna help us out. No, <laughs> well, but, you know, I like, think you, be fine. You can know the game, and like you can know the class, you can know the mechanics, you can know everything you you know technical about the game. But if you can't manage people, or you can't coordinate and, and talk to people and, and deal with a large group there's mm -hmm. nothing harder than that like right. there is nothing harder than like you say controlled chaos because that's what it is it's a bunch of sheep you know and you're trying to herd them and get them to do the right things right and, we don't say know, that in a negative way and i was <laughs> no, doing not in a negative way i was doing fleet command work in eve online where you've got 256 pilots in a raid Crazy. Or, you know, in a fleet. And then you've got five fleets all running together and all those people are coordinating. So it's a lot of fun. It brings out the best in people, honestly. It does. It does. And, and, it, and at times it's going to bring out the worst. And it's about that overcoming. And yep. then you get through it and it's that, man, the relief when you achieve. I mean, today, uh, for anyone who is following the world firsts, uh, Method lost the world first today. It's the first time that I know that Method was not the first guild to clear a mythic raid and they were beaten by an American guild uh, complexity limit, which was limit. They like expanded their guild and brought people in and teamed up with some other guilds. And they're an American guild that wanted to finally challenge method. And man, when that boss went down, I felt like the internet shook. Like you could feel it. Like there were like 70,000 people watching them get that kill. And it was super close. And like the, I mean, people weren't even playing in the, in these raids can get so difficult and so challenging. You just, you watch people struggle and just, push and push for that little tiny bit more and when you achieve it it's phenomenal and but look what method has done because of their approach to the game yep. they caused another whole group of people to build their team look for that accomplishment put in all of the effort to get through that and now you know they're feeling really good about themselves yeah. and that's going to feed back into method to try to, to come recapture back. that it's yeah. it's yeah and if it wasn't for method would we have so um sacred thanks uh, for uh, joining us tonight sacred sacred said there were, at the time that the the boss went down there were 134,000 people watching on twitch Without someone like Method creating that competition, creating this wall, this goal of this unbeatable guild, there wouldn't be a complexity limit. There wouldn't have been this race. And it became no. this UK versus United States thing. Like like watching an old pro wrestling match when people are on one side are like, USA, USA, right? Um, and it's just crazy because look at the environment that that caused. Um, just number one for love of the game, say what you want about wow. The difficulty of the encounter again, say what you want about wow. Everybody's always says wow's easy. It is not. Um, and then you see this. I, I mean, these guys were going nine days. Could you imagine nine days with a little bit of sleep? And when they would take breaks to farm to get gear and then they'd reset it and have to clear back. And it's just this crazy race that they were doing to try to get gear. It was just absolutely incredible. So, um, Oh, and it and also it, builds more interest in the game itself. And the, and it can tip those people who are on the fence about joining the game when they see something that exciting and they go, I want to be a part of that. I want to experience that. Mm -hmm. It only benefits the game. Yep, I agree. 
Um, so the last one here, what's the best solution for the competition? Best solution, in my opinion, is options. Okay. And that is you content. want a spectrum of, well, not just content, but mm. the options for how that content is presented. So you want some open world stuff. You got to have competition. That's what helps drive people. But you also want some things that I can trigger specifically having already done a series of tasks, something that is, let's say, like an epic quest or something like that, that I can do on my time, you know, when I want to for my guild. Um, and then there is the instance content. There's got to be, um, you know, enough to go around and a good balance of everything so that, yes, there might not be something open world up right now, but yet my guild still has something to do. You know, face facts, we, we, this is going to be an older gaming group, mm -hmm. wives, you know, families, kids, other responsibilities. People want to be able to schedule their play times. You know, VR talks about we want people to accomplish stuff in two hours. OK, <laughs> well, guess what? To in order to accomplish things like that in two hours, people need to plan ahead. And yeah. having some content that is instanced or some content that I can trigger when I want to do it is only going to benefit the game. It will keep people playing. I agree. I agree. Because nothing drove people out of EverQuest more than thinking with they're at work, hey, I'm going to log in, I'm going to do some XP tonight. They log in and I go, hey, great night. target's up, let's go. And they're like, yeah. oh, you know, I wanted to do this other thing. So then what they do is they just log off and they go play an alt. And that doesn't help <laughs> anybody. Yeah, it's interesting because... <sighs> Yeah, it's it, and, and oh my gosh, we just had a great comment. A great yeah, comment. Everything. Fortune Black wow. said, yeah, there's a difference between being able to do something in two hours and being able to do everything. I comment of the night if we get an award for that yeah. ever. That's the comment of the night right there. That's a really good comment. Um, so Vandrad, 48 raid size. You bumped yes. that up. You threw in controlled chaos, which led to phenomenal conversation. And I, I listed what you just said as va variable encounter system. Does that does that kind of sum yes. it up? For yeah, you? that sounds right. Yeah. OK, so then uh, so uh, if we're, before I let you go, if we're looking at it here on the board so far, 24, 48, 18, 48 is leading. Nothing really leading in the um, I guess accomplishment is leading right now in the best part of Slightly. rating slightly. Um, and in the best solution for competition, we have uh, all different. No, no upvotes yet. And chat, we're going to let you guys as well bump these up here. Um, in a little bit once we get through some of the green room. Um, we only have three more people left in the green room to come on the show. If you want to get in the green room and you want to come on the air, please jump in the green room on our Discord. There'll be definitely time for you. Um, Vandrad, good having you back, buddy. Um, I hope you always, had a good week. Always a good time being here. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for your feedback. Yeah. See you, Vandrad. See ya. All right, we're going to bring uh, Lexer in, and then we're going to do Hoye, and then we'll do um, Booch is now known as the Gamesman. <laughs> this, this, if for anyone who didn't know, I love which that is he now his name. the gamesman. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, yeah. EQ said uh, the only reason accomplishment is leading because of my vote. Yeah. Because uh, we gave Theric two. So maybe it's not fair, but eh, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> no, okay. Fair. Lexer's coming in. So, Lexer, welcome in. Uh, what's going on, Lexer? How are you? Pretty good. How are you doing? Doing good, man. Oh, how you been? How you been? Busy, I know. Busy. <laughs> It's the only way that I can describe it. I read your mind. Yeah. Oh, it's it's been nuts the last couple of days. So, Lexer, you're one of the... Uh, well, actually, we have a lot of people who come on this show that are really honest. Between you and Vandrad being back-to-back, -back, honesty and just saying what they want to <laughs> say is right out there. So, we had the meter. Meter's fun. People like to get on and adjust the meter and see where it goes. How's the mm -hmm. whiteboard doing? I know, in theory, a whiteboard's not exciting, but is it... We doing okay um, with the whiteboard? I don't think it's a bad idea. It's it's hard to kind of look at it and see where things are. So maybe okay. something in between. Okay. So maybe um, voting makes it a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger maybe as we or, go. On. I mean, you could. Uh, I mean, this is the developer. I mean, you could you set go. it up to a web to your website. You could set up to your website and have people vote through there and just pull it in. But you know, mm, that's just pull, my pull that. developer. Well, we could even do a community vote on our YouTube. Um, and then people can vote and I can pull them in from there. That's actually, look, see, see this. I just bring Lexer on and he just revolutionizes the whiteboard on night one. Night one, hey, Eric. Hey, it's why people, that's why people get me on projects. <laughs> and that's why you're always busy. So let's it jump in, Lex. Uh, you're a raider. You love raiding, right? 
Um, I used to be a hardcore raider. I used to run one of the one of the higher up uh, raiding guilds on the, the server for original EverQuest back in ninety nine two thousand. Um, and I was I was a tyrant. Okay, it's the only way to say it. I was a tyrant. I did not enjoy that rating. That okay. rating was about me proving to other people that I'm better than them. Okay. Um, after I retired from being an elitist a-hole, um, <laughs> not to say that all elitists are a-holes, just I was. Um, I came, I went back to EverQuest, started rating again, and I kind of let other people take the take the driver's seat. I was there to help with ideas, mm -hmm. hats, makeup, stuff like that. Um, but it wasn't my show. And that was much more enjoyable because to me, that was just a big party. Yeah. So what's your, what was your I, favorite raid? Do I enjoy it? No, do I enjoy it now? Yes, I do. What, what was your favorite raid? Out of any Vex game you played. Okay. Vexdal. I love that place. What was it about it? Just the, the scale of it and the fact that it was very creative. There was there's so much lore behind that place that it was insane. I mean, you'd see mm -hmm. all these crazy names that you couldn't make any sense of. But if mm -hmm. you if you were seeking out lore in the game, like through the through uh, books and such, you could actually figure out, and somebody did figure out what those names mean, and you can figure out the hierarchy of that entire um, culture. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I'll be doing. The, the one I never <laughs> got to do in EQ was the Plane of Mischief, and I watched videos like how the the pitchers would change and the, you know, the mm -hmm. halfling would start frowning. Like there were really cool little elements in plane of mischief. I never got to do it, but I watched some stuff on it and seen pictures and stuff. And that was always really cool to me. Um, w w real quick, before we jump into your, your votes here, I think my favorite raid of all time, um, it was probably in Legion. I got, I, I'm a huge fan of Legion. I really think Legion was just so well done in so many ways. And there were, there were people who liked it. There were people who didn't. But um, I really liked um, the last raid in, in Legion was just so good and had some of the hardest fights I've ever encountered with the sisters, the Coven. Um, Coven was the hardest raid fight I've ever, and I hated it. It was so hard and so frustrating, but I've never felt like when we killed that boss, I've never felt anything like that in my life. Like it was just incredible. So I really liked Legion raiding a lot. I'll have to look into that one. I retired long before that. Watch, it, watch it, a video on it. It's... um. It was a randomized fight for heroic, mm -hmm. and what draws you got could you could you could be having a great ten minutes opening great, and the randomization came in, and if your raid wasn't like tuned to make that adjustment, wipe. It was insane. See, <laughs> so it was a little bit of luck, thing, but if you were good, you could handle it. The one thing that I always loved about WoW was that the raids were always creative, always enjoyable, always different. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at look at Nax. The safety oh, dance. Great one. Um, the big Frankenstein guy. I forget his name. Yeah. Thaddeus. I yeah, think it yeah, was. The, the two mobs you had to fight. And then you yeah, down I mean, the horsemen. Yeah. They're, they're all so different. Even compared to like any other zone. Take Karazhan. Another mm -hmm. one of my favorites from WoW. Yeah, Every it, it, encounter, it except for like one, I think, was fairly creative. Not perfect, but still pretty good. You know? Yeah, yeah. With, I think a lot wow, of people everything didn't... outside of rating kind of sucks, though. Yeah, and, and that's and I think that's one of the issues with WoW, right? <clears throat> what yes. what hurt the EQ crowd is that leveling wasn't hard, but the yes. game had a really good end game for people who sort of shy away from end game. The phrase end game, right. and I, <clears throat> WoW's I is the kind best. Of, I think that's kind of one of the reasons a lot of old school gamers look down on WoW is because it took gaming to a complete left turn to where it was. In yeah. terms of at the MMO space, um, where you know everything was difficult, and when you made any progress at all, you know you had a feeling of accomplishment from that. Other people would walk by and be like, "Wow, you got to level fifty! That's yeah. amazing!" Yeah, you know. And in EQ, yeah. if you talk to a max level character, they knew everything. You, right. you could be like, if yeah. you saw a max level character, like, "Hey, I'm in the state of unrest, and there's this issue." Oh, here's what you do. You didn't have that. Being max level and WoW didn't carry a prestige with it. The gear right. you had on carried a prestige, but the the level did not. So I understand that. <clears throat> yeah. Lexer, yeah. let me ask, like, do you think that, you know, you being a tyrant as a raid leader back in, in EverQuest, 
um, and then going into WoW being, like you said, a more enjoyable experience and more uh, just a funner experience. Was that because of the systems of WoW or was that because of your change and sort of your approach to, to how you looked at rating or how you sort of, you know, instead of leading, like you think you said, you know, you just, once you started just participating, it was a, you didn't have to be that tyrant. Um, I think, well, almost everyone out there in the pandemic community knows my story by now. But um, I think it was a point where I had undergone kind of a personal metamorphosis where I was a completely, di completely different person and striving to be a better person and to kind of leave my past behind me. Um, it was a good, it was a good break from <clears throat> the norm, so to speak. Yeah, but the thing is, I mean, EverQuest helped with that. I mean, right. not at first. <laughs> In fact, at first it made things worse. There's a reason but, they call it Evercrack. There's a reason yeah. it was called that. So, Right. I mean, I traded one addiction for another. But in the end, <laughs> like when I retired from the server that I started on and went to a new server, I was a totally different person. And I felt that that was an adequate move mm -hmm. uh, given my situation. And I enjoyed the game much more. Yeah. Because I wasn't such a unforgiving Iron handed son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, and I never led a raid myself. I, I led like a multi group sort of thing, but man, it's stressful. And it's, uh, I can only it imagine is. what, you know, if you are already, you know, sort of, um, you know, in that headspace where you're already sort of a, a dominating personality, um, and then to, try and, you know, it would help with being a raid leader. I could see it helping there, but it would also put a lot of stress on you. Well, that's let's been, put that's it this been way. my problem. If I'm going to jump in real quick, that's been my problem in rainborn people. Don't tell on me. Don't, don't tell our guild leader. <clears throat> um, when there's problems, I always want to assess them and talk about them. So when I'm not in a leadership position, I'm sitting there like this, like, I just sort of I have an idea. I have an idea. <laughs> um, and it's always made me go into officership or go into guild leading. And every guild I've been in, quickly, I'm in officer. And I'm, I do not want to do that in Pantheon. I'm trying everything different in Pantheon. I'm going in as a DPS. I'm going in as just one of the team. Um, and I'm so looking forward to that. And I know the internal struggle that that's going to be. And I just pray that I can fight myself off yeah. to, to just follow, kick a bunch of butt, kill a bunch of elves and, um, you know, get loot. So I'm, I'm hoping yeah. that uh, I can be a, a really good positive team member and step back from the, uh, step back. Well, from the just having that attitude yeah. is going to be the right step for, you know, it's like um, my 12 step program. It's my 12 step. Yeah. program. <laughs> hey, if it works, right. But yeah, I mean, right? like mm -hmm. when I, when I was raid leading an EverQuest, you know, I'd be like, we, we start at 6 PM Eastern. If we don't start early, I'm making people feel like garbage because I'm insulting everybody. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. in, in the guild that I was running, being on the B team was shameful. Yeah, it, it was like where the rejects go. And it's like it's you're crazy. just there because I need a body. Isn't it crazy how much raid culture just becomes it's it really it creates a life of its own. Well, hey, Lex, yeah. I'm going to jump you into it's these conversations. Like, it's almost like prison. Yeah, <laughs> prison. A prison you want to be in sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Um, with a really good reward at the end. <laughs> um, well, for for the, for me and my personality type at the time, it was like prison where it's your top dog or you're just a bitch. Well, Vandrad just said we either started on time or we didn't go. Yeah, that was the funny well, we part. We started so early. We, we were a casual guild. but So like anybody could join our guild and anyone can sign up for raid. Even if you were a low performer, we'll help you. We'll teach you. And that was my favorite part. But there was one caveat. If we're going to raid two, three times a week and every other day you can do whatever you want with no commitment. When you sign up for raid and you show up, you're going to spend two to three hours on those nights and you're going to be playing in a very hardcore, responsible environment where you have to be responsible. So we said as much as the game's casual, don't waste other people's time. And that sort of plays off those things. So let's start with raid size, Lex. Um, you know the decision right now, 12, 24, 40. Everyone's scratching their head on the 40. I think that's just, that's just a really weird decision, I feel like. 36 would have um, been fine. Um, people are probably going to hate me for my my choice. Yeah, go for it. What are you thinking? Um, because, you know, I'm an older man now. I, I, I've got, you know, every slot on my, my daily schedule is worth its weight in gold. Mm -hmm. Um so also having gone through the 
agonizing torture of trying to get 72 people together <laughs> multiple times a week. You know, I don't ever want to go through that again. I I would rather shove a curly straw down my pee hole. Jeez. Deal with that again. <laughs> I think that's the second time that's been mentioned on this show. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I would say anywhere from two to six groups because of my final answer. Or is it my final? No. Yes. Yes. Because of, the, because of the final category answer. Okay. So you're saying you want anywhere from 12 to 36. Correct. So if you had to pick one, if I had to put you on the spot, 12 to 36, what's your thought? Hmm. I would say 36. Okay. Let's add it in. So I'm adding in. Let's, uh, let's, uh. And I just got to say, every time I see Lorem Ipsum pops up on the screen, <laughs> I I have horrible flashbacks of designing websites. <laughs> I know. I get for that. Those of you that, for those of you that don't understand that, it's because you use this giant Latin text called Lorem Ipsum to test yeah. the formatting of text. <laughs> All right. So we got 36 on the board, 48 still leading. The only one that got a vote. Let's get into the best part of rating. What's the best part of rating for you? It's just a big ass party. Mm-hmm. Oh, that can, that can kind of go into friendships and team building or controlled chaos. Really, um, <laughs> kind of. It's kind of an amalgamation of the two because I don't necessarily have to have friends. I'm not necessarily <laughs> team building, but I am just. Okay. T- I'm trying. Like, it, like, say I'm in a good mood, or I had a bad day, and I'm trying to get myself in a good mood, or I know someone in the raid is having so. a bad day. I will mm-hmm. go out of my way to try to make them laugh to where it's like, hey, watch this. Oh, I fell down a trap. Well, damn. Yeah, <laughs> no, I totally agree with that. I mean, you can you can approach it as a serious thing, a big event organized, or you can just say, you know, we're just showing up. We're going to get drunk. We're going to do stupid <laughs> shit and, you know, and go from there. And like yeah. a big group of people like doing that. It's super fun. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm of the I'm going to just. Throw it out there. I am of the refinement now because I, I don't want to say old anymore. Um, <laughs> that the loot like doesn't that. matter. Uh, I don't care about the loot anymore because if I if I got it, if I could get to it once, I can get to it again. Right. You know, it's it's going to be there again some point. So I have an interesting take on on loot. So in in WoW, towards the end, you had personal loot, but then you could put it up for grabs if it wasn't an upgrade <laughs> for you. So it was this cool. Personal loot, like if you got it, you could keep it and you couldn't trade it if it wasn't an upgrade. So like there was no battling over loot. So that was, it was interesting. Um, I don't mind handing out loot and doing loot council and DKP and all that stuff, but it was an interesting way to really kind of team build when you got something you didn't need. Let's put it up for roll. And we kept this like loot chart where if you got something, you were put to the end of the list, but if you needed it, you always rolled, blah, blah, blah. It was really difficult, but um, it was a really good system. And so for me, I rarely rolled on things because unless someone else, unless nobody needed it, I'd grab it. But I like that I could get my own loot. So I would get my own loot. And a lot of times I wasn't putting stuff up for roll because it was upgrades because I wasn't rolling on other people's stuff. So it's funny because I wasn't this loot obsessed person. But man, when I got my own loot, it was like, oh, let me look at this. And like, it's like, I loved mm-hmm. it. Right. But I, I was really cool because I never really jumped in as the raid leader to take other people's loot. Um, mm-hmm. It was an interesting it's, it's a tough mechanic. But yeah, I, I would say that you know, while loot is amazing and I love loot, you're right. It, it's going to get replaced and the people don't if you, if you run a good guild. Um, so mm-hmm. it's a mixed bag on the loot. So right. what about the last one here? The best solution for the competition of rating um, that we've seen in open world games in the past. How does Pantheon handle that? What's your thoughts? See, and this is going to sound weird. I agree with Fandra. It's got it. You got to have a, a wide spectrum of options. Okay. To keep people busy. And this is why I said two to six groups, because why not make a raid that's for two groups? Why not make a, a raid that's for four groups? Why not make one that's for six or five? You know, there's no reason you can't. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah. you have to actually sit down and do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. As a, you know, as a, de- a designer developer yourself, I mean, is that a lot of work? Like, is that a lot of Absolutely. manpower? Absolutely. It's a lot yeah. of work. But I look at it. It's almost required one, work, though, right? It, it's it's one of these things where, and this is this is where, if I were talking to another designer of another game that I had an issue with, I'd be like, designer to designer here, mm-hmm. stop being lazy. You're not doing it for you. You're doing it for your players, your community. 
mm-hmm. your your game that you supposedly love. So why what not if we have do to it wait instead more? of going, oh, it's too much work? What if we have to wait more? That's fine. Because the thing is... I'm fine with it, but have, the, that's why a lot of the community... Patches. Yeah, yeah. And, and they... I mean, I don't know where we stand on this now, but one of the big discussion points when the game was coming out is that they were going to be more of an EQ-style expansion system. You know, where mm-hmm. you sort of saw yearly content, big content drops yearly. Uh, maybe not the size of a full WoW expansion that you'd see every two, three years, but the yearly ones would add up to be at least equal or more. But you're going to get it f- more frequently so that you're, you know, able to continue on in the game, which I, I like. I hope that's how they go with it uh, in the future. Yeah, that that's a whole other four-hour conversation with me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, Laxer, thank you, buddy. Good yeah, stuff. no thanks problem. For, thanks you for guys, waiting. have a good night. You too, man. See you, Lex. All right, Hoye, oh yeah, you're going to be in next, so we'll be bringing you in here. A lot of good points there. So right now, leading the way is raid size of 48, uh, the sense of accomplishment, and the variable encounter systems, and not by much. They're really the only ones that have gotten a vote so far. So um, in chat, we're going to give you guys a chance to influence that in a little bit, but we're going to bring Hoye in now. So here you come, Hoye. What's up, my man? How are you? Hey, man. How, how are you doing? How doing you good, man. Doing? Talking rating. Good. I know you're a fan. My, my oh, yeah, tank here. I really like. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was a huge uh, PVP player. Uh, that's all I wanted to do, and then I found rating and got into a good guild, and it kind of shifted. So I still like both, but uh, but I definitely like rating. Isn't that interesting? Because I think you, you hit the nail on the head. If you get into a good environment, rating just is. There's a big difference between being in a guild that doesn't have strong leadership for rating because you really do need. Mm-hmm. Um, you do need a good leader to raid, um, yeah. someone who's going to do research, someone who's going to teach someone who can see the whole battlefield and assess fights quickly to make adjustments. And when you're Somebody in one, going to squash the drama too. Yeah. Mm, and when you're yeah, in one, totally. that's like, just like everybody just show up when you can and everything's okay. And it's all, don't you worry. Like, any, just bring this guy's yeah. friends. With, it just, it's just, it's <laughs> Sorry. I'm out. Yeah. It's yeah. nothing against you, uh, wanting to, to hold hands and sing Kumbaya, but I just know at the end of the day, it doesn't really work. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to, if you're in a raid group, you're making a commitment to ever, however many other people that you're going to focus and you're going to do your job. It's, it's, you know what it's like? It's, I know there's not a lot of Patriot fans out. Well, there is, but not, there's a lot of haters. It's like the Patriot (laughs) system, right? Do your job. Do your job. That's what raiding is. Don't worry about why that healer didn't heal you. Figure out why you needed a heal. Go with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's part of the team building. And, you know, I like that. I, I, I like the whole aspect of, you know, why it's just a game, but you still have other people that are counting on you to be there. So I, I really Boots like the just whole, said the Patriot yeah. system is to cheat. Well, well if you find I a mean, little little you know, encounter, and if you can find a little, like, loop in the encounter to get by it, yeah, you do what you do. So. I, I've, I've yeah. passed some mobs kind of really awkwardly, you know? <laughs> I used to farm the bard in Freeport who couldn't run around the car, who had to run all the way around the large carpet. And she was, like, super high level, so I was a wizard, and I'd shoot her a bunch, and then I'd, like, move over here, and then I'd shoot her, and then I'd, like, cross the carpet. But if I didn't cross the carpet quick enough, it was one shot. But man, I farmed her to death. Um <laughs> So, so Hoye, let's get started with raid size. What are you thinking? 24. No doubt. 24. 24. Okay. We got a tie going Something on here. Wrong. I keep so clicking I, on this I stream. really like 24. I really like 12. Because uh, 12 is really easy to get uh, 12 people together. And, you know, like if you're just got some people who just gonna want to go muck around, you can go take down some raid mobs. I think that's pretty cool with just two. It doesn't take hardly any coordination or anything like that. It's really easy. I like that. Um, and... I, I know in their last thing they said 40. Um, I don't like 40 at all. Do it 36 or 42, but don't leave the four man out there. That's it's like, weird. It just feels weird. That's like sitting at the kitty table. Like, oh, those are just the people that are getting carried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're in, if you're in that four man group, like, what does it say about you? Maybe that's I, like the leadership group, though. Maybe they're doing something weird with like a four person leadership group or something. Who knows? Those, just weird. That's a group that everybody's cybering each other in. Oh, <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> so, um, all right. So we got 24 and 48 are tied right now. Um, what is the best part of rating? Not, for you? not 40. Well, I guess it'd be 42, but yeah. Well, um, 48 was from before. You tied oh, okay, it with the 24, okay, okay, so you're, you're good. Okay. okay. Um, so the best part of rating for you? Um, hell, I'll say it. Nobody else is going to say it. I like shit talking to my buddy that I'm good friends with. Competition. Being like, you know, 
Uh, kind of. But also talking shit about, dude, why did that that paladin out heal our main tank healer? What's going on here? The okay. Um, obviously, I'm just kind of being silly on that, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I, I like the I like the friendship. So you've got your little family as a whole. Um, you know, your 24, 48, your main core raiding guild, and you may not know everything about each individual one, but you're all good friends. You all talk, at, you know, every night, whatever. But then you also have like your really close friends that um, you could. Uh, you know, chat with you. That those were the people that you were sending, you know, whispers and tells back and forth during the raid, just yeah. you know, mm-hmm. talking during downtime, whatever. Yep. Um, so that was big, and then you know, just the challenge and loot, the whole thing that comes with it, the content. You find a lot of lore in the raids and stuff. So I like just the whole shebang. Awesome. I put you in vote for friendships and team buildings. That sound good. That's so good. Yeah. So we have accomplishment and friendships and team building tied right now for the best part of rating. So the last section here, Oye, the best solution for the competition with an open world system. So that one, I I don't really know exactly how to answer because I, I think we're I think everybody's still waiting to see exactly how they pull this off as far as the open world raid, how it's going to work, how much content they're going to have, and stuff like that. So it kind of depends. I know there will definitely be some kind of competition, but mm-hmm. what kind of competition is that really? How in what form is that competition going to come? You know, um, yeah. like for me, my my thoughts are automatically going to go to PvP, and holy hell, that's going to be really one hell of a time. Open world PvP with a raid. So, yeah. um, EQ two had some. Um, it was mostly instance raids, but um, they did have a couple of the really top mobs that were open world contested. And it took a four group, 24 group, just for the raid mob. But then you had to bring another four or six groups just to block the other PvP trying to, you know, wipe your, your raid. So, uh, ultimately, it was a blast, but none of the mobs got killed hardly. But that's a whole PvP uh, aspect. We can kind of push that aside since they probably won't even have PvP at launch. But, uh, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, as far as that, um, I know Joppa just said that uh, raid's going to be locked to the first first pull. Uh, yeah. You get it; it's going to be locked. So that's that's definitely a good win. Thumbs up to that. Um, otherwise, I mean, it, is there going to be enough content to where we don't need to um, kind of have like the phasing that I mentioned earlier? Like, oh, you've already killed this mob once this week; you have to wait and. You know, so on your screen, he's gone, but everybody else can pull him when they want to. Or if there's enough content, you don't need to do that. But yeah. I don't know. I think the competition is going to have I, I got to get in, in game and see how it's done to really see, you know, the negatives and how they can be fixed and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think they maybe they need to wait and see what kind of population they have right like what right how how the world sort of develops or like and that's it it's, it's like. such an impossible predictor too like you can't yeah. that that's the hardest part about designing a game like this if you knew you were going to have you know two thousand people in an area <laughs> let's make it something mm-hmm. up but you, then you can design to it but you don't know you don't know what the progression is going to look like with a hard leveling system you don't know how many people are going to get to max level um mm-hmm. There's, there's, it's, it's tough. It's really and, tough. and I think another thing is just the server stability. Um, I know, I mean, back in the day, it was a little bit more, um, hardware dependent, mm-hmm. but I mean, some of those raids, I mean, you had to turn all your settings down and that was just for an instance yeah. of just 24. But what if you have a whole zone full of five raids, especially mm-hmm. if they got 40 man raids, like how, how hard is that going to Im- impact the server and stability? Yeah. yeah when i when i said the 48 number i mean that, that's totally in my mind separate from like the technical issues that might result i know like having a huge number of people doing that like you say is is pretty taxing and you know there's there's that other side of it so yeah, yeah but that's on them to figure out i mean yeah and I, I think i think hardware and technology is coming uh far enough that i don't think it will be in- i agree yeah so uh, you you brought up a lot of stuff there what's on the board right now and if you want to vote on one of these, you want to put something different. We have raid lock content, community policing itself, or variable encounter systems. And someone asked in chat, what is variable encounter systems? It basically means that you can't just come up with one way to fix it. Some of them are going to be open world timed. And if you're there first, you get it. Some of them are going to be locked um, behind content. Some may be instanced. Um, it's, it, you know, that's kind of what the, uh, the variable encounter system is. Don't just create one style, have them sort of all there so people can go do other things or they can just, uh, just be open world. So where would you put your vote for that? Oh yeah. 
Uh, probably variable. Okay. Probably. Okay, perfect. So that one's I, I, I have a feeling that they'll... I mean, I don't know how big beta is going to be, but I think a lot of this whole rating solutions is going to be done in beta or even possibly even after game launches and they realize something needs to be done. Possibly. Cool. All right, Hoya, anything to add before we drop you out and go to the gamesmen? <laughs> uh, the only other side comment I have is I don't think the community is going to police it. So, um, Ooh. Okay. I just I I really don't think that's going to happen. Mostly uh, for the same thought I had um, that Vandron mentioned a while back, is that if you have a guild uh, that is fully capable of saying, "Well, screw you! I don't care if you think I'm an a hole, this or that. I've got you know forty other people that I can roll with for a dungeon that only needs six or whatever. Mm -hmm. They I've got all my crafters. I don't need anything from the server. Then I don't." there's there's no incentive to not be an a-hole you know um sure. so what if nobody else wants to group with you or this and that you know so i i don't think so um i think vr really wants to go back to that old school eq you know your reputation is huge and i think that's good i would definitely be down to give it a go um yeah. but i have a feeling that it's just not going to work out and vr is going to need to to do something else you know they're going to need to implement something yeah, I think they should try it. Like, I'm not, I agree. I know what you're saying, and I'm, I'm hopeful, but I think you're right. They should start there and then go, you know, implement systems. Small adjustments. If, if needed along the way, right? Because um, I see what you're saying. Cool. Oh, yeah, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Yep, y'all have a good one. Thanks, man. See you, oh, right. by the way, uh, I really enjoyed your, uh, damn, uh, your uh, video. Sorry, I thought you dropped me down before I got that No, out. you're there, you're here, you're here. Yeah, so uh, what, from uh, Theric? Yes, I've, I've been enjoying those. So oh, right on, man. Awesome. That's yeah. awesome. It is Go nice ahead. to have someone on the team who is uh, able to dig into fine details and put things together because I'm the guy who just drinks and talks. So it's great to have someone who's a little more yeah. intelligent. Chris, than me, so. Chris Kane does a good job. But damn, yep. he uses big words, and I ain't got time for that. <laughs> I know. I know. I love his videos so much. He's got it that uh, he's doing the keepings of Castigue the third part, I think, pretty soon. Yeah. He is on Twitter, so I'm, I can't wait for that. That's awesome. Thank you. Hoya. Anyways, I appreciate it. Y'all have a good one. Thank you, Later, dude. All right. The Gamesman of Booch. That's what we've... Uh, we changed his nickname today. I'm bringing him in. Here we go. Get ready for the Gamesman of Booch. And then chat, we're coming to you next. So get ready in the chat to start because we're going to go tier by tier here. And me and Theric are going to somehow try to figure out these votes and tabulate them in time without taking an hour and get these numbers properly adjusted to what you guys are saying. So, um, okay. So, uh, gamesman of booch, sir, gamesman, welcome. Uh -oh. Gamesman can't even use his microphone. Oh, no. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, there oh, he is. is. <laughs> He's putting on the accent. Cheers. So, cheers. Oh. Gentlemen. Booch. Yes. What's up, booch. What do you think of our eating? It's been a wonderful show thus far. <laughs> Booch has so, now uh, gone full role playing into the gamesman. Uh, I am the yeah. gamesman. <laughs> you dubbed me the gamesman. I, was it because of my yep. my proficiency in the gaming industry? Is that why you dubbed me the, the gamesman? I don't know. You Is said you were the gamesman. What? I said no such thing. <laughs> the origin the story is all messed up. <laughs> this, I, yeah, uh, it's like the Joker. All fucked up. You it's guys like the, got oh, geez. Here we go. Here. Drop an no, F bombs. The Booch bombs. We're back to normal. We're back okay. to normal. So, Booch, you, you a raiding out. fan? Oh, yeah. Oh. What's your favorite raid? An EQ? Just ever. Um, I like Planet Time was good. The, what was it? The uh, Zach Brothers there? That mm. was good. Anguish? Anguish was good in, in EQ. Uh, yeah, that's probably... Yeah, those are probably one of the better. V, uh, Vexthal was great, though. Those guys were saying You can hear Vexthal, it a lot. That was a great... That I'm going to openly admit, song. I don't remember that one because I think I had moved expansion. on. Yeah, the I think I expansion. moved on at that point. So I need to go watch a video of that because a lot of people have been saying VT. A lot but the mobs people. hit like trucks. Like it was a big mm -hmm. difference between the expansion before and then the, all of a sudden these mobs are just wailing on you. It's like oh, it was a big difference. It was great. That was great. All right. So raid size, let's start there. What are your thoughts on raid size? You're coming from EQ, so. Well, I think, all right. So I think ideally... I would like to see, and I think they've mentioned it, um, raids being not end game only. So, yeah. for example, a twenty, a level twenty raid, a level thirty raid. Does it, you know what I'm saying? And also variable sizes. So, I'm thinking like twelve would be is a little on the light side because you know, 
if a raid is designed for 12 people, that's two groups. And also fill up a well, a well, and a well grouped single group, a well geared single group will most likely eventually be able to beat that 12 man raid. Mm -hmm. that's a good concept. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think 12 is a little light for a raid because is if you're, you know, two groups, is that really a raid? You know, would it feel like a raid? Why don't you just go get yeah. another, you know what I'm saying? It's a little I light. I agree. I agree. That doesn't feel like a raid to me. That feels like a, it feels like something else, a tough yeah. dungeon, you know? Right, well, look at, right. look at the best parts of raiding that are on the board right now. Accomplishments, big party or event, controlled right. chaos, epic right. environment. Yeah, exactly. Do exactly. those hit with a 12 man? I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved raiding as a 10 man and wow, I did. Uh, so some of my favorite raids were 10 man, but I think it was more so at the time because it was what we could put together. So at, the, at that yeah. early stage, it, it opened raiding for us. So of course it has a great memory for it. Um, oh, yeah. But I definitely prefer when we were 25, 30, you know? Yeah. So I, th I think, like I said, ideally what it would be is like, but I would say in the low end, 24, okay. and on the high end, 48. Which if you had is, to pick you know, one, make, what would, would you want? Sense. Oh, I would say 48. 48, okay. 48 is going to yeah. take the lead there with that vote. Yeah, I would say 48. Okay. But I would, I mean, ideal, like I said, I would personally like to see um, in, the, in the lower level, something like, you know, you go down to 20, okay, this is a 24-man raid, and the content, obviously the boss wouldn't be, you know, his regen would be much less, so you could actually beat him. You would need the crazy DPS to beat him down, whereas the 48, you know, the boss would have obviously more hit points or whatever, you know, whatever the mechanic mm -hmm. would be. You know what I mean? So it's interesting. Like, we've, we've, and we're going to get the chats uh, feeling here in a bit, and we have a lot of people in chat tonight, so it, it's going to probably change quite a bit. But I have not heard one person that's like, yeah, 40 makes sense. It's so... No, that's why I couldn't believe he said that last week when he was like, oh, yeah, 40, we're going to have... And then I, someone asked a question about it because it does, isn't divisible by six. <laughs> and uh, job is... Can you have half of us? Four, four extra people. What are they going to be doing? Like the marching Isn't it band, weird that it really like, doesn't matter? Have the drum and the other guys would be carrying the flag. You know, what, I mean, what's going on? <laughs> isn't it weird, bird. though, that it actually doesn't matter? Like, there's legit... Logically, we're thinking UI. Well, like there's going to be yeah, four right, people right. in their own group. It right. has it has no right. matter at all because everyone's health bars are going to probably be up on the screen, right? You're going to have your yeah, raid frames. It won't matter, but we're all so yeah. accustomed to. They'll oh. just be a non-full group, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, I mean, or maybe, that gonna, or maybe it will. Maybe when you turn into a raid, it's just one group, and forty's there, and it doesn't even oh, matter. Right. And we're yeah, sitting it's here not like, even like groups. Like EQ always had groups. You know what <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The groups just concept math though. Of 40 guys. <laughs> Shepto just uh, welcome Shepto. He goes OCD. It's total OCD yeah. issues. It's all of us oh, yeah. just like, oh, well, that doesn't make sense. The forty doesn't work. <laughs> you know, right. the forty because what do you do? Well, I guess I, I don't know. I guess in theory, if you think about it. You know, like you said, you mentioned the bard. It would work because if you had four bards, you could, wow. and they all do an AOE buffs. You could just put all them in the same group with those four stragglers, and then just like, okay, you stand in that corner, and, then, and everyone gets hit with the with the AOE buffs, and everything's good. There you go. Dragon said, "Well, hey, if they just then, make it four groups of ten, it's perfect." So is it is the go. whole system yeah, going to change work. when you're in a raid? Okay. Maybe. I mean, that's not beyond the realm of possibility. I mean, who Gula knows? Gula said, uh, yeah. <laughs> said uh, nobody wants to be. Yeah, it's so no, funny. Right. Like, you're at the, you're at the, the kids' table. <laughs> it's like, it's so like, funny because you know, it like, doesn't even like matter. Go sit at the kids' table. You're in the four-man group tonight, John. What? It, it, it literally doesn't matter. But I want to do some At DPS. all, but none of us want to be in the fourth group. It's literally a psychological barrier that we're self-creating. Uh, last last week, your DPS was a little low, so I'm going to have to put you in the four man. <laughs> You're in there with, like, Cousin Eddie. I'll try, yeah. I'll, I'll try harder. The than I swear I'll try harder. You're in there with the people <laughs> that are the on you're in the, you're the four man group is like you're in there with like the people with the open mic that are like, <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't Mom, put me in the four man Mom. You know I don't like the pizza flavored hot pockets. Meatloaf. <laughs> I'm out of goddamn Mountain Dew again. Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh my Christ. gosh! All right, let's. Oh my God. Yes, uh, Booch. <laughs> Booch is digesting right now. Um, let's oh, move on God, to just, best just, part of raiding. So I'm going to give you what's on the board. You can still bring up your own answer, but on the board okay. right now we have accomplishment, friendships, and team building. That's one. Big event or party. That's one. Epic environment. Epic environment and big party or close we may have to um and then controlled chaos just the chaos of it all so those are what's on the board but what are your thoughts so i'm definitely an accomplishments guy okay 
because to me when you're beating the end game content you know you're at the top of the of your game you know what Mm -hmm. i'm saying so that's what i'm striving for the whole time i'm playing the game because i don't know about you guys when i play a game if i'm if i'm not good at it i I stop playing it okay so that's the that's the whole that's my whole psyche you know what i'm saying you don't just strive to be better you don't overcome booch you don't you don't pull up the gamesman yeah, the games, that's, that's why I am the gamesman, because, you know, I eventually do come to the top. You know, the cream rises to the top. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I agree with you. I mean, accomplishment is, is it's, you know, we need, we're just, you know, as gamers, we're just conditioned to chase that carrot at the end of the stick, man. Like, we want to get that thing that is prestige. You Mr. Know? Gunnison, no, you know, Mr. Gunnison thing, just threw a whole loop in. He goes, the best part of rating, skipping it for PVP. Oh, I've never PVP. <laughs> yeah, no. I'll, never, I'll never lose to another man. So, uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, no, but you know, the, the, the good part of rating, you know, that ties in with the accomplishment is you're actually seeing like, uh, you're seeing parts of the game that other people necessarily aren't seeing because you're beating this content. You know what I'm saying? So you're actually seeing the most of the game that you can yeah. whereas other people are playing the game but they're not seeing the whole game because they're not at that you know they're not getting the end game boss or whatever you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i, I but i think that's part of it too is that's why it's such an accomplishment because you're you know how many what percentage of people are actually going to see this right part of the game and that's okay right. you know we got to get away from this mindset of i deserve to see everything for whatever level of effort i'm willing to put in you know it's mm-hmm. like no I worked hard to learn and I worked hard to organize and do all these things that got me here. And, you know, this is the reward is I get to see this, you know, this, I get to take down this God and this, you know, plane, you know, and, and that's, that's great. You know, that's great. Yeah. I mean, there's a negative side to it too. I mean, conversely, there's like, when I was playing EQ, the, the end of my, the last five years, I played EQ, I was in a guild and, and, um, it was Mashin Shin was the guild and realm of insanity was the guild that was finishing the end game content first for the last few expansions i played but we were usually second if not second third and it was really close literally the day the expansion came out we were completing the all the raids five raids whatever raids there were but at the end there it was so intense there was so like we had to have our magello updated to you know what you know so they could see what gear we had yeah. and the raid leaders looking at it, oh dude you got to put that you know you got to put that aug in that piece of armor you're not getting max stats P- people that haven't raided people that haven't raided on like an epic level like that don't understand that it isn't just showing up no there's not so by a much to by, it i mean they would look over the parses and the guy would get us in ventrilo and he'd be like oh you know you did uh 18,000 DPS in uh, so-and-so, you know, we had like a bar. It was almost like a military. It was like we had a Booch, bar. Booch, oh. they said you sound like an Allstate commercial. Did I? Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm open for gigs. So, uh, <laughs> no, but, but, you know, the guy would literally look over your parse and be like, hey, so-and-so did 22,000 DPS. Why did you do 18,000 or whatever, you know, on the boss? And, yeah. you know, they're looking over the, oh, he mezzed six mobs. You only mezzed four. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. It's That's weird too. There's the a lot of fun in that through, math. You know? There's a lot but, of fun in looking over those logs and trying and, to figure well, out. That's what, that's what it took to get, you know, to get that. The competition was so, so tight that, um, it was almost like a second job at the end there. I was like, you know what, dude, I got, I, I mean, I can't do this anymore. It was just too, too much, too much pressure. But I ended up get. I was there long enough where we actually did beat them one expansion and we were first all servers EQ to beat the raid count. That was 2000, I think that was 14, maybe something like that, 13, 14 around there. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was, I mean, that, that's where it almost takes the fun out of the game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Sure, you're actually, but it takes so much to stay at that level that it's not even a game anymore. It's almost like a second yeah. job. It's not fun. Yeah. yeah. For me, that's, you know, you know I'll, let, I'll let minus crunch the numbers. I'll manage the, you know, the Rangers and, and somebody else can crunch the numbers because that's, that's not for me that's not the fun part right somebody no. uh budrick said he can't wait to raid like the ancient dragons i can't ra- wait to raid the elven city oh, dude we already have our wall up you're not invited I don't, will they make a that rogue. A I have will you be able to just run through like oh, yeah. the other okay. races and wreck stuff i don't know yes are they gonna do it's gonna yeah. be a thing yeah faction oh, and all that's I gonna matter of, i see a lot of scars and scar invasions in the future yeah. If I may have to, te- maybe that only halfling who 
Takes a brotherhood with the scar if they're attacking the elves. <laughs> You're running with the scar. <laughs> yeah, there's just a little halfling and like everyone wants to eat me. It's the only danger I have to worry about. Okay, so Booch, last one here. Um, you've 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 actually your your votes here have caused the top answers with picking forty eight and accomplishment. The best solution for the uh, competition. So you you were big in the EQ rating scene. So what's All right, so does like it work in modern like day? What, what are your thoughts? Well, like I like I always do. I go with perfect world scenario, and then what's most likely going to work scenario. So in a perfect <laughs> world. I would say, ideally, like Theric said, and uh, who was it that said it? the content? I'd say if you let the community police itself, and you have enough content, yeah, in theory, that would be the best way to do it because then you have no conflicts, right? But you know, in in that scenario, what's going to happen is there's always going to be that one encounter where the guy Wait drops a second. the Theric. Did a stormtrooper just walk behind you? I'm pretty sure we just had the Mandalorian. A I thought I was seeing stuff. I'm like, white hoodie. Yeah. I, I came over and I looked here and I'm like, what's in this beer? What is this? <laughs> yeah, it's my, my household of stormtroopers <laughs> running around behind me. <laughs> yeah. So that's an interesting concept, Booch, that, um, well, that, you that, know, you, gonna, that you have that to sort of have both. Of the, yeah. con the content, the content, if, even if you have enough where there's no conflicts there's always going to be the raid encounter where the guy drops the better loot he's going to have the better one-hander he's going to have the shield everyone wants so there's going to be people wanting to farm it more often so there's always going to be fights over that one boss that's going to happen so i think the best solution is is going to be very real content very real encounter system so mr gunnerson uh gunson just asked uh what are we defining competition in this. So Pantheon's going to an old school philosophy that was in EQ, which was um, there's no instances, right? So everything's open world. And when everything's open world, it means that if you're sitting there waiting for something to spawn, most of the time you're holding the camp is what it used to be called. So there was sort of an honor system back in the day that if a group had a camp held, um, you would get on a list. Someone in that group who was holding it would... Um, decide you know to keep that list and and when they were leaving they would go to list says your group ready to come no okay i'll go to the next person you would basically hand that list over and someone else would take it it was a very social system and yeah, there were you go into the zone say camp check yep camp check people would tell you what's camped people you'd ask to get on the camp. list yep. that'd be it yeah so in modern society we wonder is that possible and that's you know if if these more modern generation players that are used to being able to go into an instance and have your own raid and be able to really schedule and, you know, figure it out from there. Um, we're coming into a situation where you're not really going to be able to schedule. You will be, uh, there will be a sort of luck in a timing structure or really working things out and organizing to be more on the spot possibly. So when we talk about how do we solve that competition of groups trying to get to content, um, and being able to have a night that you plan five hours and actually do something with it. So right now, if you look at what we have there, raid locking is once you've killed a boss, you have a week, you can't kill it again. So the spawn timer is a little faster. And once you kill it, you're out and you come back next week. Or you can lock it behind keys. But it, and, and, you know, once you've killed it and you lock it to your raid and everyone that was there doesn't get to kill it again type of thing. Um, the content is, well, if there's enough content, then the competition for individual spawns wouldn't be, you know, enough, so to speak. So if there's, if there's, if there's a lot of content, then there won't be a ton of competition because you'll have other options. And they've, they've hinted at that being the case, but it's very tough in my opinion for a small community. Then the other piece is going old school is the community policing itself is really what EverQuest did with those loots. Now the variable encounter system is saying, well, let's use everything. And, and that's sort of a cop out. But at the same time, VR sort of hinted at that. Um, let's allow certain aspects where that is instanced. Let's allow certain aspects where it's completely open world. Let's allow lockouts. Let's allow keying. And it's 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 sort of a cop out, obviously, for that answer because it involves being very variable and allowing us to use the different things we've found in MMORPGs. But it does make sense too, right? Like you'll have some highly contested things, but then you'll have some stuff you can go jump to. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when we did the show on um, on instancing versus open world, <clears throat> one of the I was all for the open world 100%. Um, but the one concession that I was sort of prepared was when it comes to raids, um, just because of the necessity to it's such a 
you know, it's it's content that isn't widely available and it doesn't really detract from the overall feel of the world if you have to instance or phase or do something with a with a raid encounter like that. So um, And even if it's just the is, encounter. Like if the if the if the raid is in a large scale dungeon area and you have to fight your way through it, you have to go through, but then once you fight through clear, you know, maybe there's like a portal everyone puts their hand on and it's timed, so you can't just zerg it. You know, so you mm. clear to it, you clear the area, everybody puts their hand on a portal for like, you know, and then once everyone's hands on, the raid leader can say enter, you know, so there's some kind of like, again, so you can't just like farm rush all the mobs there. You'd have to actually clear right. the area to be able to do that go in. That's fine because then the fight itself isn't about having an active world. When you're in the fight, you're in the fight. But if yeah. everything around it is still an open world and you can get the sense of the world, I think that is important. So if you use instancing, there's a way to do it and still keep the world. Now, the problem is in WoW, the whole raid's instance. So as you're right, you never see anybody for five hours. In this That's setup, you, you'd you only see, pe you wouldn't see people when you're killing the boss, but you don't want to see people when you're killing a boss. You want to focus on the boss. So yeah, I mean, that sort of, that's the whole, that's what the really what people are worried about the most, right? Is that, that other people coming in and ruining the experience or locking down the experience. Um, so mm -hmm. I think that would be a reasonable solution. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, so, other, the other thing is the, the reason I'm, I'm against the, the lockout timers is, is for example, you can only raid your, 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 your guild's going to raid three nights a week, say you can only make two and, uh, the nights, the night you can't make it is the night that you're going off to the boss that drops the loot for your class. So now you got to wait the next week. And if you can't make it the next week, then you, you know, that's where I don't well, like. Well, if you're not raid machine. locked, you could go into a pickup group. Yeah, true, true. Which could build community. So it's not the, yeah. trust me, I don't think any of us want to go into a pickup group, but the end, you could. Or if you get I into another. You know, the, other, the other thing to, about the raids is I think with this community, I think uh, world events would be successful. Yeah. Because, so, you know, just because, not be, you know, you couldn't do that with every game, but I think with this game, they could get away with it because of the community. You know what I mean? You, I, I, I would imagine a bunch of us, if we're on at the same time and they spawn some world event, I, I, I would imagine it wouldn't take us very long to get a raid together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so what do you think? What's your best solution? Do you want to add something new or do you want to go with one of those? No, I would, I really do think variable, variable encounter system is the best. Cool. Really. That's I mean, because, you know, you, you would have the open world and then even that system where they're saying only only you can aggro the boss if you have some kind of a flagging or keying or flagging system mm -hmm. where, you know, there's an, there's three other groups in the same area, but they can't even aggro the boss because they're not keyed or whatever. That I mean, that's a, that's an alternative also. Yeah. Awesome. Gamesman of Booch. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Take it easy, man. I appreciate it. Um, All right, brother. We have See a few more people that jumped into the green room. Um, we're, we're pushing time here pretty late. Um, stay in there. We might grab you guys for a quick. Actually, here's what we're going to do. Bronson and Fulgo, we're going to grab you, but we're just going to run through the questions. You get your votes on the air, then we're going to do the chat. You good with that there? Yep. Okay, so um, Fulgo, you were in there first. You're, mute, you're muted right now and your headset's off. If you want to adjust those and I'll drag you into the room. We'll give you a couple seconds. So here he comes. Fulgo, welcome to the, uh, the chat here. Uh, hi. Okay, so we're going to squeeze you in. We were going to end it, but we're going to squeeze you guys, your last two in. So we're going to run through these raid questions. So first of all, welcome. <laughs> Sorry to squeeze you in for your first time on. Um, raid size, what are you feeling? Uh, sorry, I'm in Australia, so I'm lagging a bit. Raid size, I'm happy for 40, to be honest. Okay. Um, You're the first one who said 40. One we, massive group. So we can't get over the psychological you know, barrier, but you've, you've done it. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, I'll add for well, you. Well, look, if it's if the the raid, if instead of a whole bunch of small groups, it's just one massive group, it works. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so we got you at 40, uh, 45. Let's see, get the color right. Um, okay, so what about the best part of rating? What do you like most about rating? Um, best part of rating is for me probably a com accomplishment. Um, being able to figure out mechanics, figure out what is going on with the raid, how it works, why it works, mm. and then, and then how to beat it. Yeah, when you fail a bunch of times, it makes that accomplishment so much better. It, it yeah. really does. It gets frustrating, and luckily I don't have hair, so I can't pull any out anymore. Yeah. But man, <laughs> yeah. But that's how you learn, right? And I get what you're saying. I agree too. Like learning the different, you know, each, how each raid is designed is really a fun process, just in and of itself. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then the last one here, Fulgo, um, 
the best solution for the competition aspects of it? What are your thoughts uh, with what we have there or your own idea? Um, I'm sitting with variable encounter systems. Um, sort of like bring in the raid lockout, sure. If the if there's a lot of groups or a lot of guilds um, going for that one raid, increase the lockout so more people can get into it and more people can do it. If it is a low demand raid, then shorten the lockouts. Um, so, and then it, also it gives the developers a very um, lenient development style for different things and different ideas when you are able to just kind of make each raid its own thing. Yeah, and I like yeah. what you said about you know the demand, right? If it's a low demand or high demand rate, I mean that's key. I think that's super important. Slender, thank yeah. you for the follow. No problem. Awesome, full. Thank you for jumping in. Sorry to cut you short, but next time jump in, we'll give you more time, buddy. No, good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going with Bronson, the last one. We have to rush Bronson. So, so what? Oh, so, oh you so gosh. so. What's up, Bronson? How are you? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Wow. So, well, you had all the answers, so this should be easy for you. We're going to run you right through it. Yeah, What's your raid size? Uh, raid size, 24. Okay. 24 it, is it, in it second 24. place. 24 is just easier that way all around. I mean, they're going to balance it up for a 48, maybe. That's possible, I guess. Actually, that harder. ties 24 and 48. Yeah, okay. Making a difference here. Making uh, a difference. Best, of, uh, best part of raiding. What do you think? That's a good question. Uh, let's see. Um, I like to. I like a little bit of. Uh, see, there's no one answer for me. Like some people, it seems like it's. I, I missed most of the show, so I don't know what everybody oh, said. Oh, great! I got the tail end of Booch. Sorry, man. <laughs> um, I caught the tail end of Booch, and so I, I like accomplishments a little bit. Not so much as Booch does. I'm a much more controlled chaos a little bit, okay. probably in friendship, friendship and team building. Uh, those are my f more f favorites. Um, if you had to pick one, as, friendship and team building or controlled chaos? I would go with the other way. E epic environment. Let's go with that. Oh, look at that. Right. I just threw I, a complete. I just, I just saw that. I just saw that one. Give me yeah. that one. Yeah, there there's definitely moments in raiding where something is just so cool that just being a part of it is like, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. The whole so, world's got to feel right. So best solution for content com competition? Uh, you need to add a category. I think Ooh, all okay. of the above is very, very applicable to this category. That's kind of what all the variable above. rating encounter systems is, right? Uh... Hmm. I don't know. I guess that's how you define it. I don't. When I read that, I didn't pick that up as the definition. Of I think I think that's kind of what it is. You're going to have to police yourself a little. There's going to be some raid locks. There's going to be a lot of content available. There's there's going to be instancing when needed. There's going to be different timers. I think that that kind of ties into what you're saying. All right. Well, I'll go with variable. And that is killing it system. right now. Killing it. Well, Bronson, thanks for jumping in late. Yeah, no problem. All right, man. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, guys. See you, Bronson. Good night. Okay, so we are going to let the chat influence this, and we're going to shut the show down here. We're a little later tonight, but uh, it's been fun. Everyone's chatting and still here, so we haven't lost anybody, so let's keep rocking. So you're going to have to help me here, Theric. Chat, mm -hmm. it's your time. Stay focused on one question at a time so we can kind of figure out what we have to do here, okay? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to pull in – well, let's just, let's just go for this. Let's see what happens. So, chat, first question. What is the raid size that you would prefer? So, chat, light it up. So, I'm okay. only taking singles. So, 24, okay. 24. Oh, 24, yeah, look at that. Bronson's, Bronson's got the, the temperature of the community. Max, 36. So we got, I got the 24s, 36, 36, 36, four 36s. Yeah. Wow. Nobody voted, nobody voted for 40. <laughs> Did we get any 48s? Nope. Nope. There it nope. is. There it is, yeah. Is that Booch again voting for the same category? It's cheating? Yeah. Sorry, we'll put it in. <laughs> so... We're going to shut it off here soon. 
Um, I think we got one more 24. Think, yeah. Wow, 24. The chat has spoken. Going crazy. Okay, so guys, raid size 24 masterfully uh, took the lead there. That's that's pretty crazy. Like, it's way ahead. So everyone the seems to really groups. like the, the 24. Yeah, the four groups. So uh, very interesting. Very interesting. So let me finish making the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, 48 red. So it looks like in order, we have 24 as the lead. We have 36 as second and a close third would be 48. So we'll put those in order there. Mm. So it makes sense. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Very close to those two. 48 and 36 are very close. Okay. So mm -hmm. interesting. Um, 24, big lead. Wow. Um, okay. So let's talk about the best part of raiding. Um, let's stick to what's there so that we can try to calibrate uh, do this as best we can. So go ahead. What is the best part of rating from the chat? <laughs> this is going to get messy. <laughs> Big party, baby. <laughs> Big party, <laughs> baby. Def. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got to allow that. All right. So what do we got here? We got. Yeah, I think accomplishments can mean loot as well. That's party so, yeah. track. Yeah. I think accomplishment is uh, going pretty strong. So we added, I added big party for one there for def. Uh, we got accomplishment one, two, three, four, five, five accomplishments. Ooh. Yeah, we're all just achievers, a bunch of achievers. That was way too many. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> okay, uh, and I'll fix this in a second. So we got uh, epic environment. Um, yeah. Friendship team building. We have one, two three so we have three three for working together teamwork um two for epic yep. environment so working together team building we got three and go yep. to 85 oh bronson says epic and epic is what that's three more than for epic 85 yep. okay getting big so we're gonna have to take these little ones and put them off to the side because they're not competing we're gonna have to Sorry, we got it. We got this. We got this, guys. Don't worry. Don't worry. Move stuff around. Yeah. Okay, so I think I, I, that's... I think, yeah. I, am, I know people in chat say loot a lot, and we didn't put loot on the board. I think we're sort of putting that in with accomplishment, Accomplishment. Right? Yeah, we are. We are. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like we go um, first. Accomplishment was pretty huge. Uh, second to that is going to be uh, environment and friendships and team building are tied. Mm -hmm. So those are tied. So roughly those are going to be the tied ones and we're going to have accomplishment as the most important. And then the last one here, I have a feeling what we're going to see here. So go ahead, chat, light it up. Best solution for competition in raid. <laughs> Bronson says you trophy whores. Everybody <laughs> like an accomplishment. Content. Yeah. Well, content is king, right? That's what they say. Mm -hmm. I've heard that somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Community. Ooh. So me... four variables, one content, Hold on, let two me... community. Dragon says content. One community? How many community? Two? Uh, two community. Okay. And then content got what, two as well? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Variable and counter systems is just literally taking over the entire thing. <laughs> To like put these way down here. We have to like shrink the others yeah. to just make. I think variable encounter system is probably going to take it. Yep. Just covers right. the most ground. Wow. So, okay. So let's look at what we got. We say as a community here, um, ranging anywhere between 40 and 50 people, um, raid size 24, 36, 48, 24, a big lead. When we talk about why do we love raiding, accomplishment. We did include loot in there, so it's the loot, it's the achieving, it's overcoming as a group. Um, and then everybody's completely okay with just different systems, which includes instancing. So that's, I'm actually proud of the community for saying, listen, in modern day and age, we may need a little bit of that, as long as it's not the full mm -hmm. end. Um, so there you yeah. go, Some so a neat little infograph here. I'm going to unlock this. I think I have a solution to make this prettier, and we'll, we'll post it online. So one cool thing about the whiteboard is we can actually, like, that's post this idea, picture yeah. and it actually can mean something right um and kind of give ideas of what the community is looking at so i'll adjust this a little bit but uh overall what do you guys think was the whiteboard an okay strategy are we okay with the whiteboard um 
Best part of rating, I'm gonna unlock real quick. We'll move that up. Did we like this new system? Is it something we can we can agree on that needs a little bit of improvement? But that's kind of what we're looking at when we look at rating, guys. We're looking at uh, 24 man raid size based on accomplishment with variable encounter systems. Pretty good for a first attempt. I need to worry about the font sizes and how that's going to work, but it looks like a messy yes. whiteboard. If you had one of those professors that just wrote stuff everywhere and went crazy with it, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. that's what I said before. We need a, like a pointer system here to be able to point to something on the whiteboard, a little laser pointer or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, That's thank good. you very much. Um, the way that it works with affiliate is we cannot put content on YouTube for 24 hours. That's an agreement you make. Um, so what we'll do is uh, Friday nights at about 11 o'clock, you'll see a premiere event comes up where this will be on demand. So you'll be able to watch on demand on, on YouTube. If you only caught some of this, or you want to go back and check anything out. I really appreciate everyone who uh, jumped in tonight. Thank you to everybody who followed us. We're up to 241 followers. I thank you guys for that. It's, it's awesome. You guys have awesome. just been incredible. So thank you. And um, we're up to 11 subscribers. So thank you guys for really um having faith in us so uh pretty awesome there and lexer said let's get some uh get like a voting system set up on like a website or on youtube's uh community piece so we'll, we'll work on that too i'm totally cool with having uh having something like that so guys thank you so much um i appreciate mm -hmm. everything you guys have done i appreciate all the conversation in the future if you've enjoyed being on the show here or being in the chat jump into the, the green room we love having people on the air um, so thank you guys. Uh, I think next week we're probably gonna have a dev stream. We haven't had it announced yet, but if they're doing every other week, we may see a dev stream. And if so, we will follow that up with the post dev show. So thank you everybody. Uh, it's been awesome. Theric, thank you for co-hosting and thank you for sticking around a little later tonight. I appreciate that. Oh, no problem. Thank you for having me. That was awesome. So much fun. Yeah, super fun. So guys, uh, have a great night. Later guys.